אוקיי, שלום לכולם, כל כך הרבה משתתפים, תודה שבאתם, שמח לראות אתכם. שמי אוליביה שיפמן, אני מנכ"ל ומייסד של נאוטק, הפועלת בתחום הקולבוריישן והקונפרנסינג ועבודה מרחוק כבר עשרים שנה. רובכם מכירים אותנו דרך זום, אנחנו נציגים של זום כמעט עשור. ובתקופה האחרונה הארכנו את ה-workflow שלנו. ברשותכם עכשיו אעבור לאנגלית לטובת האורח שלנו. I've been in the collaboration, VC and remote work business for almost 20 years now. That's a long time to see trends, companies, and technologies come and go. Fortunately, remote learning is here to stay. It's not just about COVID, And the current war that emphasizes the need of remote learning. It's about creating a simple and efficient workflow all year round. Our goal is to simplify this workflow for the academia as well as learning centers. And when I first met class, I just clicked. Some housekeeping first. This is a webinar, which means that you can see and hear me, but I cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, and I will do my best with our team to answer at the end of the 30-minute session. Also, this webinar will be recorded, and you will get the recording soon. I have Massimo Gentili here with me. He is general manager of Europe, Middle East, and Africa at CLASS. Massimo, take it away. Thank you very much, Olivier. And first of all, thank you very much to you and your team for organizing this webinar today. It's a great opportunity to introduce CLASS to our uh, potential clients, prospects, anybody interested in learning more about Uh, a tool that we have developed for virtual communication and collaboration. So briefly, as Olivia said, I'm, I'm looking after the business of class technology, an American company in uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So today we're going to be uh, basically showing you a demonstration of our product and why we believe that our product can somehow redefine the entire student experience and can support your uh, teaching And learning models, either it is you know, about online classes or hybrid classes, well, class is what actually you need to support your courses. So before I jump into a sandbox where I can give you at least a short overview of what the product is like, let me uh, share some slides uh, briefly. I'm not going to be boring, hopefully, uh, to give you a better introduction of class itself and what is the value proposition that uh, we are happy to bring to our clients. So first of all, um, everybody has been suffering for, for, for the pandemic, right? Now we are in the post-pandemic world. And the thing is that there are some things that have been, you know, somehow changed forever. So the workplace, education have changed and uh, the, the possibility Actually, they need to use technology uh, for uh, synchronous communications is just simply here to stay. So remote work actually is here to stay. And uh, using uh, the synchronous communications in education is now stronger than ever before. And what is important is that whatever is online now, it cannot be asynchronous anymore. Uh, today, teachers and students demand uh, synchronous communication. So we have run actually a couple of white papers, you know, in collaboration with Times Higher Education. In particular, uh, you know, with students, but also teachers across several countries. You can find them in our website and download them. So today I just want to point out a couple of good points. I mean, from our uh, survey and, you know, the survey that we are sponsored with Times Higher Education, it looks like 63% of the students want higher learning. I mean, they believe that it's going to be uh, something that uh, will bring them flexibility, the flexibility they, they require to better organize their uh, 
personal and 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 you know uh, life and uh, and the experience in in the universities even in the high school actually but what also is important is that they believe that this is going to affect also the future so after they had completed you know the the, uh, the studies so when they need to look at what universities you know to go to it looks like 61 percent of the university will de the of the students will decide also based on the offering that they have for online teaching the type of flexibility that they will offer the students but one of the points that uh, really struck me the most is this one when it's about the, the hybrid learning i mean 76 percent of the students that you can see there you know a, a, a few a few good points, um, believe that the future work experience will be hybrid in nature. So nobody expects us to go in presence and be just sitting in an office. They believe that part of their work, no matter if there is a pandemic or any other catastrophe, I mean, they believe that it will be partly performed remotely. So basically, uh, a 64 percent of them believe that the hybrid learning is more reflective of the workplace that where they're going to be you know basically working uh, when they completed their uh, cycle of studies in the, at the university so entirely in person experience is something that seems to belong to the past so in producing the right level of technology and becoming familiar with that is becoming a real strong need so looking at the post-COVID expectations, I mean, uh, uh, in particular, instructor, teachers, what they expect is to have a technology that is flexible, accessible, and innovative. Flexible because it, it should allow, but it shouldn't impose any model, right? It should be um, basically uh, able to give various options to faculty or learners on how to use it. Access, it's about accessibility. I mean, the technology should improve the quality of the education, the inclusivity. Uh, students should be able to access them, you know, basically from anywhere uh, and cross-platform. So either on a mobile phone or uh, on a desktop computer, depending on what you know the situation is, the technology needs to support that. And obviously innovative, as I mentioned even in my previous slide. I mean, workforce preparation, because it's a preparation for the future. So looking at what is, you know, what, what, what your experience is like using this type of technologies, um, how there are a lot of video conferencing tools, but actually those tools have been designed to support virtual meeting, but not actually a virtual classroom solution itself that requires a very advanced level of uh, communication and interaction between the part among the parties that actually are part of, uh, you know, this, the session. So what normally what is missing when we ask educators, what is missing when you do an online program? And they say, well, what we're missing is actually the engagement because often the students look boring. Uh, they don't participate. It's very difficult for us to track the participation and to drive the participation. So we need to have the right skill set, but we need to have the right technology to be able to actually drive the engagement. So if you look at, uh, you know, the experience in a physical classroom, in a virtual classroom, I know some of you today in the audience, I, I'm pretty sure of that I have teaching experience. So when you enter a physical classroom, I'm not going to tell you anything new when I say that you're going to start engaging with your students immediately as the very first step, you know, into the classroom. And you start engaging with them. You look at them in the eyes, right? There is body language. You talk, you you, you take content, you share physical content or digital content, you divide them into groups. It's, it's a workflow that is going to keep the level of engagement high. And engagement has a huge impact on student success. We did a survey with several educators all over the world. And they say, you know, the result is amazing because they say 70% of those activities are missing when you move online because you don't have the right level of technology to reflect what the experience is like when you are in present. So as you can see, what class, you know, the, the goal of class is actually to be one single platform, one-stop shopping solutions for all synchronous communication. So the moment you get into, into class, 
as an instructor, you will find everything you need, actually. You don't need integration with other third parties to find the right level of functionalities that you require to drive engagement and have an impact on student success. So we have created a class. Class was created over three years ago in the US by Michael Chazen, that is former creator, actually of uh, one of the founder of uh, Blackboard. Uh, Blackboard at the, uh, at the end of the nineties actually started defining the e-learning model itself. And uh, after a few years, uh, Michael moved to other companies as well. And uh, three years ago, he just, you know, he spotted a real, a real gap out there. There were a lot of video conferencing tools or some virtual classroom, but they were reflecting more a pedagogical model that was used 10 years ago. So today there are different needs. Class, you know, as I said, it's been around for three years. Uh, now we have nearly, you know, nearly 200 employees. But what is important to consider is that it's a very solid company with 1,500 customers that accounts for more than 10 million users worldwide. So we have a lot of students that every day they use our products. Uh, and we are present in 75 countries. So references in all the sector, higher education, K-12, corporate and government, even you know, very large corporation or large implementations on a national scale. So you know, I'm gonna buy, be jumping into, into a sandbox in a bit, but just let me clarify something. Class is a platform, is a virtual classroom solution and was built on Zoom. So this means that we using the Zoom uh, video conferencing infrastructure, we plug class into Zoom and we transform uh, Zoom into a real virtual classroom with all the functionality. The experience is totally different because it's not about a meeting tool, it's about a real classroom in a virtual environment. Um, we did that in Zoom and uh, what we did very recently, actually, uh, we announced the creation of a class for Microsoft Teams. Why is that? Because we have clients using Zoom, we have clients using Teams. Actually, sometimes there are, this, the, there are you know, clients of Zoom and Teams in the same organization. So what we did at class was basically to develop our platform to be able to plug it on both. So depending you know, what the clients want to use, we're gonna be able to provide class either for Zoom clients or for Microsoft Teams clients. Uh, there are a lot of uh, advantages to using class, uh, but instead of spending really a lot of time telling you about it now, uh, I prefer to start actually to jump into a live demonstrations if you allow me. And uh, so you're gonna figure out by yourself actually the potential. And then obviously we're gonna be available with the Nowtech team um, you know, to follow up individually with you. So I'm gonna jump into a sandbox. So a live interface of classroom now that I'm gonna share on my screen. You will see the little videos of students and teachers. Those videos are simulated video, obviously, but I'm gonna be live into the real interface. So give me a quick second and I'm gonna start this. So um, I understand that now you should be able to see uh, my in my screen. Yes, uh, we are. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. Uh, basically, what you see now is uh, you know is a sandbox, but the the interface is actually live. So let me walk you through uh, through the main component. Okay, so on the top left corner, you see myself. I'm sitting in the podium because I'm let's say that I'm the teacher, right, in this session. So when I get into the classroom. That's where I'm going to be sitting. And below me, you see that uh, there is a list of participants. Now, this list has been preloaded. It could be actually preloaded directly to class or integrated uh, with your LM assistance. If you're using, for example, Moodle or Blackboard or Canvas or Desire to Learn, we can do an integration called uh, LTI for single sign on. So basically, if you have a students enrolled in 20 different courses, in each course, they will find exactly the class, the link to jump into the classroom for that course. Because let's not forget that one of the key differences, you know, with using just Zoom, for example, is that uh, when we create a classroom and a classroom is mapped to a course, every time that we get into the classroom, we get into the same classroom. It's like having the virtual key 
of a virtual cluster that is somehow a replica of your physical cluster. So this means that for the entire duration of the course, all the students will get in here. So if you see now here on the left side, I can see immediately uh, the students that are present, but if I go down, I can see also the absent students because the system is gonna track down automatically who are the people that are here today or that are, or will be expected to be here, but are not there. And all this data can be actually exported in the dashboard analytics that we have. Now, this is the list of students. If we move to the right, actually on the screen, you will see at the bottom, the, the let's say the, the media bar where you find the main button, where you find the learning tools, the video, the participants. And we will go through these functionalities in a second. Uh, if we go up, we will see the classroom itself. Uh, you have a gallery view. We can have different type of views, obviously, but on top, there is a first row where you can see the additional structures, okay? Why this is important? Because if you, in a room, you know, you're teaching a course and you have uh, a teaching assistant or somebody else that needs to be visible to the students, it's important that they are somehow, you know, sitting next uh, uh, to the main instructor, the primary teacher, actually, as they will be doing it in a physical classroom. And, uh, and actually, you can even move that uh, and put other people in the first row. But I will show you that, you know, basically, uh, one of the most important things to replicate the experience that you normally have in a physical classroom is that you have a flow of uh, action and you don't need to interrupt one action to start another one or restart as you normally do, for example, when you share a screen online, right? But you can simply launch activities. So I could actually launch an activity. As you can see over here, I'm sharing content now and you can still see the first row, okay? So the people will be there and students can also navigate the content. Now, if I wanna go back to the old students on the top area, top left corner, I see the class logo, I click on that, I can still see everybody, right? So this is called top navigation, similar to what you have in a browser, but you have it here. And you can launch multiple activities actually, even more than that. And uh, the students can, can navigate with you on this. If you decide to use all the space that you have there because you don't want anybody you know, on top, you just take that off and basically you remove this so you can have all the space that you need. Now, let me go back here to the students. You may see that I have we have had you know additional cameras which could ping around. I mean, especially if you're running hybrid classroom, having a camera pointed to the classroom or having a video camera pointed to uh, a blackboard, or or maybe you want to share that live, you know, with everybody because somebody is doing something on site and you want to broadcast that and then you want to record it. So it's it's definitely gonna be there, right? And it's easy to do that. I mean, uh, we can teach you how to simply have these additional video cameras and you can have a more immersive experience actually inside any activities that you do. If you don't need all the attention over here, you can actually unpin that and remove it. And you see all the students anyway over here. Now, if we go on the, on the, on the, the main area, um, on the media bar at the bottom, uh, we can click on the learning tools and uh, by removing this, I want to show you the full learning tools. So you see an area right below me. I mean, this is the interface of the teacher, right? So right below the podium, you see a course content area in the class management area. On the course content, I mean, you will find all the functionalities that normally a teacher needs actually to to run the class, right? So they need to launch a syllabus. I mean, they need to launch an assignment, an assessment. They will find it here, just one click away. And they can preload that. They can prepare that before the classroom and definitely we stay there. So I'll give you an example. If you wanna create a quiz, you can click on an assessment quiz area and this will show me whatever I have created. But as you can see, and next to the example, there is the launch button. So until I launch it, the rest of the classroom will not see it. So if I click on launch, that will open a new tab. And because I'm an instructor, I can preview the quiz over here. And you see this has launched actually a quiz, which I could take it. Now, let me just step back because you need to see the beauty of this platform. If I go on top and click on uh, the class logo, I will see all the students, right? And when I click to the next 
to the tab next to it, everybody will see this. But when I launch a quiz, everybody will be able to see only their own quiz. So they can take the quiz online. Nobody will see what the others do. And what is important is that because you're a teacher, you're home, right? Or maybe you're in a classroom, but how can you make sure that people don't cheat, for example, or at least there is a deterrent from cheating and looking for the right answer somewhere else? What about the identity? Well, you know what? There is a functionality that you can find here called Proctor, which is the Proctor view. You click on that and you can select all the students. Once you launch it, basically, each individual student will get a, a quick pop-up window and they can actually decide to accept it or not. But to do the exam, they need to accept it. So they will give the possibility of, of to class to actually show not only the video of the students, but a full picture of the screen, which is not actually two video sources, okay? The one of the screens like having um, uh, multiple pictures that are taken very fast in terms of seconds, and will give you the possibility to monitor what the students are doing. So you can see if somebody is doing something that is not allowed to do during a quiz. Um, so you don't have any more, you know, to do any more what, what, what you normally do that you tell them, hey, go to the LMS and just take the quiz, right? Because you don't know who's taking the quiz, you don't know what they're doing it. Now you can do it live and you can do it with all the students. Once you're done, then you go to the proctor view, you can handle it and they submit, uh, the, you know, once they have submitted the, the quiz, actually, you know, as I do it here, uh, you, you complete the quiz, you simply submit it, and this will go directly to uh, either the grade book that is going to show the notes, or it could be integrated with your LMS system, and then we could exchange even uh, this type of integration with your own grade book. Um, you can see that there are other functionalities. I know the time is of the essence here. We would like to show you a lot of things, but you can have surveys that you can do at the end. You can do polling questions. You have a lot of you know these activities that that normally you use to actually keep uh, the engagement live. You know when you're you're explaining something uh, to see if they're really following you or not. If they take it, you may pre-prepare some questions or you can do it on the fly and then launch it. When you launch it, every student will get the questions. Uh, now, this is a simulation, so this is not just fake students right now with me, right? But basically here, you would see actually the live, the response of each individual student to specific questions that you do live. And you see the number of responses, the users, you know, uh, with that. And you could even, you know, uh, basically export it and uh, and download it. And you know what? You could actually click on the other uh, tabs and go back to the other tabs, which is really reflecting the type of uh, a seamless workflow that you have in, in a physical classroom. Now, um, another functionality that I would like to show you is obviously you have a chat area, you can share the screen, uh, you can collaborate. You can, uh, there is a collaborate uh, button that is going to show you immediately the integration of class with Google Docs, with, uh, with Microsoft Office. Actually, uh, you can launch a whiteboard, you can launch a Wii video. The whiteboard is an interactive, uh, actually, whiteboard. So this means that you can actually uh, use it uh, to, to, to show something live, but to collaborate live on something, and then you can save, actually, what you have done and you can share it again in the next session. So here you see a list of the sessions that I've done before. So I could actually, you know, launch something that I did in my previous lessons, and I could take it from here. And I can allow students actually to write into that and, and do whatever I believe is, is important, you know, uh, to do. I want to do over here. But when I go to collaborate, I could, uh, for example, um, launch a video. I can have a list of video because we have an integration with YouTube, with Vimeo. I mean, whatever I'm going to be launching here is actually um, an integrated, uh, an integration with uh, with the video. So this means that I'm, I'm not sharing my screen. So the quality of the video will not downgrade because once you're live into the classroom, when I click on the video, this will go live uh, and uh, in the best possible quality, uh, according to your own bandwidth, obviously, and everything. 
but it will not create issues or 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 have a, a, a lower level of experience because it's it's an integration that we have done. And and most of all, you have all the materials over there in your areas where you can uh, uh, you can put things. You know the list of the videos over here. You can upload files. So when you, you have an area here where you can keep yeah, your own files and you can allow students actually even to download the files if you want to. So it's really reflecting um, uh, in a visual environment, the magical experience that normally you have in a, in a physical environment. Um, let me show you, uh, there are you know, a lot of more functionalities, but let me show you something important to you. I show you that you have a lot of uh, a student, for example, in this classroom, and you want to divide them into groups, right? So you're familiar with breakout rooms. So this is advanced breakout rooms, where you can assign automatically or manually the people. Once you create it, you can move even people around from a breakout, uh, breakout rooms to another one. When you open all the rooms, that's what you get. So basically, as a teacher, you have this dashboard. You see all of them. And then when you go to class management tool, for example, you can go to quiz. And then you can decide uh, uh, to launch a specific quiz to one group or to another one, you know, depending on, uh, on, on what you want to do. And you just launch it to them, actually. You don't launch it to all. And uh, you could go and you can have a group doing something, another group working on a totally different uh, subject. So you can control all of them. You can go to the chat area and, and monitor the chat from outside. So you have multiple um uh, activities that you can control uh, directly with this dashboard and talking about the dashboard uh, last but not the least uh, right below the podium you see there is a class management area where you can track automatically the attendance but you can launch a dashboard where you can have some key information about uh, the activity that are going on in these specific sessions although you can do a cross session uh basically check and uh, you can see that uh, uh, here you can click on view user details and you can see granularly uh, information about uh, uh, who's in the room but uh, uh, the level of focus uh, that there is for each individual student the level of focus means that the system is tracking when somebody is actually using class or maybe you just see the video but maybe they're reading a newspaper right so you cannot know because we cannot know from class if it's reading a newspaper or, or, or not, right? We don't know the activity that it's doing, but what we know for sure is that if it's clicking outside of class, the system stops counting the time and will resume only once the user is back. This is important because you can see that if a classroom has been going on for two hours, but the focus time is one hour, this means that for one hour, the student has been doing something else. But it's tracking a lot of more information about uh, uh, participations and, uh, and more. Uh, because it's important in the end to have a, a better understanding of what uh, of what the experience is like in the classroom, what you need to improve for your students, and 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 so forth. Um, here we still have the dashboard that you close the dashboard and you go back, you know, everybody to the main room. And is you know all of this can be you know uh, a lot of this can be actually uh, recorded and can be accessed that. I know that we reach uh, 25 minutes since I started, but uh, mm -hmm. allow me please another couple of minutes because I want to show you something. What that I've been showing here as an, uh, is the access as a, uh, to class as a standard uh, product, right? Here, I'm sharing now in my screen the access to a Blackboard page, LMS system, which will be very similar experience if you have Moodle or you have Canvas or Desire to Learn. Here, you can see that class has been integrated in the courses. So when I launch a course, you see this is a course launched on Blackboard. I can go down here on the, uh, on the left side. I can see launch class. When I launch the integration in class, I will see this page where the teachers and actually the students can find the upcoming classes where I can just, they have been scheduled and that I can just click and you know launch it whenever it's ready. They can actually click on previous to see the previous one uh, that have happened already, but important, they can find here the recording. So they can find automatically the recording and the teacher actually can even see the attendance, you know, to, uh, to the individual sessions and they can go granularly into each one of them for the, you know, for the students, you know, for the entire course. 
Uh, and uh, this is going to make it very easy for them. This is called Henens integration, is LTI 1.3. So it's more advanced than just a single sign on. And you can find all the information easily available uh, to everybody. Now, last but not the least, uh, because I need to rush, I just want to show you that basically what I've shown uh, you today was class for Zoom. What I'm showing you right now is class for Teams. So as you can see, it's exactly the same thing. What, what the main difference really is that the bar where I see the functionalities, instead of putting it at the bottom as, you know, to reflect the Zoom experience, here is on top to reflect the Teams experience. But in the end, we're going to have uh, basically a very similar experience with the same uh, type of functionality because we're going to have parity with the, with the product. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop uh, here. Um, there is a lot that we could say about... Uh, uh, let's say about uh, class, about the difference a class can make uh, with these advanced classroom uh, management tools and the way we're enhancing, you know, or the entire teaching and learning experience. But uh, we look forward actually to to talk individually to you. Uh, I want to stop in case there is somebody that has any questions. Thank you very much, Massimo. Actually, we have a few questions on the uh, on the Q and A. And yeah. the first question that we have is, uh, can I join a class session without downloading the Zoom or Microsoft Teams to my device? Yes, indeed, a very good question. Actually, to make it easy, um, you don't need to download any app. You can just go and click and uh, open it from a web browser. This is possible uh, on uh, Class for Zoom and on Class for Teams on both products. So very easy. Uh, and okay. Safe. Good. Uh, second question, this is uh, Moshe asking, how many people may I have in a single concurrent room? That, because we have an integration, let's say, you know, the, the, the classical example of uh, class for Zoom, uh, Zoom can allow 100 concurrent users, right? But it can also allow 300 concurrent users or 1,000 concurrent users. So basically, class does not put limitation itself. Uh, it depends on the type of Zoom license that you have. If your Zoom license allows, for example, for 300 concurrent users, then you can put 300 concurrent users in a, in, in a class. If it is a thousand, then you can go higher. You know, class is not put in limitations. Okay. Another question is, can the recordings be available in the course area or in the LMS? Uh, so let's say the course is in the LMS. Uh, it's supposed okay. to be in the LMS, the course. So basically, yes, with an integration, the recording will be available in the course area that is in your LMS. But uh, the, the recording can also be available in the cloud, for example. Uh, you're using, for example, Class for Zoom, then you have the option. Uh, you have it in the cloud. You could even download it and delete it from the cloud. So it's up to you. But when we have... Uh, and uh, an enhanced integration with the LMS system, uh, then you can also have it available directly in the appropriate area in, the, in your LMS system. Okay, nice. So we're gonna take just another last question because of, of the time uh, constraints. Uh, there is a question about, uh, about the licensing model of class. Uh, yeah. Can you please elaborate a little bit on, on that? Yeah, so I don't know if the question for somebody working in education or maybe from corporate, right? So what I can tell is that we have two licensing models, one for corporate, one for education. Um, for education, it's based on uh, an FTE model. So basically, uh, we need to figure out what is the full-time equivalent of students in a, a specific institutions, and then we give uh, a flat pricing to use it with all the courses, with all the students and the teachers that are teaching in that institutions. And we don't limit, for example, the number of uh, sessions that you can have or the individual class that you can create. It's a full-time equivalent model. For corporate sector, it's more based on the number of instructors that you have. So it's a, it's a bit different. Obviously, more expensive in corporate and definitely cheaper in uh, education because we do it uh, as other providers to better support the education environment for non not-for-profit organizations in particular. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Massimo. Fascinating as always. <laughs> thank like you. I <laughs> 
like I said, I'm happy to expand our remote and hybrid workflow. I'm also happy to make remote learning more engaging and more effective. I hope Massimo and I made you think of your organization workflow. Um, just a few words in, the, in Hebrew before, before we close. Toda raba she starafem le webinar. Arishon shel naotek be 2024. בקרוב יהיו לנו עוד כמה וובינרים, אירועים, תערוכות, השקות, אז stay tuned. בקרוב תקבלו את, הק... את ההקלטה של הוובינר ופרטים יצירת קשר איתנו. שיהיה לכם יום נעים וסוף שבוע שקט. תודה רבה. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you all. Bye-bye.